right, so this is going to be a quick video on how to find average rate of change um, from a table, and then we're going to do an equation, and then we're going to do a graph, okay? So they're asking us to look at the interval from 2 to 4. So here's 2, and here's 4. We don't really care about any of the other numbers. I'm going to call this x1 y1. I'm going to call this x2 and y2. So the first thing is identifying what your x1, y1, x2, y2 are. If these were points, I'd have 2, 51. Um, I'd have 4, 20. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it and plug it into this formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, so right now it's just a matter of substitution. So y2 is 29. So I'm going to put 29. Y1 is 51. So I'm going to put 51. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have X2, which is 4, and minus Y1, which is 2. Okay. So now all you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and substitute calculations. I'm going to go to my calculator app. And I'm going to need to, multiply, I need to subtract 29 minus 51, and I get negative 22. So I'm going to have negative 22 divided by, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 22 divided by 2 is negative 11. So my slope, aka my average rate of change, is negative 11. Done. Um, I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is finding the same thing from an equation. So here they want us to, here's our equation. Um, and they're giving us, here's our x1, here's our x2. Uh, so they're telling us that we're going from negative 5 to 4. To find out what the y's are, you're going to take the negative 5, you're going to plug it in. So if I'm going to do f of negative 5, I'm going to plug it into my equation, which is negative, negative 5. Here's my x, right? I'm going to square it minus 5 times my x is negative 5. I go negative 5, and then I have to add 12 to it. And I'm getting that by plugging negative 5 in for x here. So negative 5 squared is 25, and there's a negative sign in front, so that's negative 25. Negative times negative is a positive, so that's plus 25. And then I have plus 12. So my negative 25 plus 25 is 0, plus 12 is equal to 12. That's equal to 12. So there's my, this is my x2. And I do the same thing for my, no, this is my y2. Silly Mr. Geese. So I took my x1, which is negative 5, and I plugged it in. And this value right here is going to be my y1 because I took my x1, I plugged it in to get my y1. I'm going to do the same thing for my x2 now. So let me switch colors a little bit. So here's my x2. So I'm going to take a 4 and plug it in. So f of 4 is equal to, and again, I'm going to plug it into this function. So I have negative 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus 12. And this is going to give me my y2. So this is negative 16 because 4 squared is 16. There's a negative sign in front, so that's negative 16. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And then I have to add 12 to that. So I have negative 36 plus 12. Negative 36 plus 12 is 36 minus 12 which is equal to 24, so that's negative 24. Use your calculator to help you get that. And there's your y2. So now we're going to plug it into the formula. It's purple, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to go like this. So my y2 is negative 24. So I'm going to go negative 24 minus my y1 is 12 right here 
so 12. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my x's. So my x2 is 4, right, right there, and my x1 is negative 5. I'm going to plug that in, so I have 4 minus negative 5. So on the top, I have negative 36. And on the bottom, I have 4 plus 5, because negative, negative is a positive, so that's positive 9. Negative 36 divided by 9 is negative 4. So my average rate of change, final answer is negative 4. Okay. All right, last question. So same prep, except now I don't have to do any calculations. I'm only looking from 6 to 8. So here's my 6. Here's my 8. Okay. So my coordinate for 6, let me just go ahead and erase this so you can see. So um, at 6, this point is negative 8. So I have 6 comma negative 8. That's 8. And then for 8, which is this point over here, I have 8 comma negative 2. Yep, negative 2. There we go. So 8 comma negative 2. I just had to make sure. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my formula. So I have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to label. So x1, because that's my first one, is my x. The one that goes with that is a y1. This is my x2 and my y2. So now I'm just going to plug stuff in, right? So y2 is negative 2 minus my y1 is negative 8. And then on the bottom, I have my x2, which is 8, minus my x1, which is 6. So this becomes a positive, so negative 2 plus 8 is 6. And then 8 minus 6 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So final answer is 3. Could have also gotten that just to confirm. This is going to help you on the next one. Uh, let's go ahead and do this in some read. So I have 6, negative 8, which is right there. 8, negative 2, which is right there. I'm going to draw this line between them, and I'm going to do rise over run. So what do I mean by that? This is my rise, right? So it's going up. This is, we're counting by twos here. So 2, 4, 6. So this year is 6. And then my run, let's go ahead and do this in green. And my run is 2. So rise, which is 6, divided by 2 is equal to 3 as well. Um, and the slope is positive because it's going up from left to right. Okay, if you don't get the second part, uh, watch the video. So I'm just going to try to go ahead just to kind of like catch you up. All right, talk to you all soon.